So what do we do with this? How do we use this in chemistry? Well, what we do is we can actually use this just like we did the um, uh, mole to, to, to um, particles. It's going to be a conversion factor between the two substances. So I can have grams and moles, or I can have moles over grams, depending on the setup of the problem. So it's probably best just to look at an example, and it can make sense out of what I'm talking about here. So what I'm looking for is the moles of magnesium. So it says how many moles of magnesium are in 124.6 grams of magnesium. So if I have 124.6 grams of magnesium, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the grams of magnesium. What I want to do is convert that to the moles. So I think about the connection between these two. The connection is grams and moles, moles and grams. Since I'm looking at going between moles and grams and grams and moles, that's going to be my molar mass. I'm going to put one mole. By definition, one molar mass is the mass of one molar substance. And I look up magnesium on the periodic table, and I find that it's 24.31. So what I do is I take my 124.6, and I'm going to divide it by the molar mass, which comes out to be 5 point one three let's see I've got one two three four significant figures so probably should go one more so five one two five moles of magnesium so what this tells me is that if I have this mass of magnesium this is how many moles that go with it it's not equal to this isn't a molar mass but this is just a you know generic mass of mag magnesium but I can use my molar mass to determine how many moles. And then if I wanted to, I could convert that to the number of atoms, because it's what we did in the last section. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at another example. Okay, so two more examples here. What is the mass of 1.32 moles of carbon dioxide? Okay, so this time I'm looking for the mass of carbon dioxide. So I start with that. Um, I'm given 1.32 moles of CO2. So my first step is to set up my conversion factor. Put down the unit that I have here, which is mole of CO2. And since I want to convert from moles, I want to go to the mass. The mass on the top. And then I just have to think about how these two measurements are connected to each other. Grams and moles. Obviously, it's going to be the molar mass. So I'm going to put mole in the bottom. And I already calculated the molar mass of this compound. So I have to add up all the carbons and all the oxygens, which I did previously. And I get 44.01. So if I want to figure this out, I have to do 1.32 times 44.01 to give me my molar mass. I'm sorry, to give me my mass. So that would be 58.1 grams of carbon dioxide. That's how much carbon dioxide that I would have. So if I have this many moles that are produced in an experiment, what I would expect is the mass to be 58.1 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at another one. The last one. How many molecules? So this is a little bit different. Here I'm looking for molecules of ammonia. Okay, so now we have to recognize that we have molecules here, not moles, but molecule. So therefore, this is a type of particle, but what I'm starting with is 96.4 grams of ammonia. So first thing to do is get rid of the mass. Very first step. Shouldn't really think too much about this. Just write the same unit that you have there on the bottom. What I want to do is I want to convert that to moles of ammonia. Now, it would be nice if I go directly to the molecules, but we don't have a connection between grams and particles. Our connection is from grams to moles, and our connection is the molecule to moles. So we can't just make a jump from grams to molecules. We're kind of stuck going into the mole. This is what I was saying before about the mole being the, the centerpiece to chemistry because everything is going to be connected to this concept of one mole. If I have one mole, then I know what the mass of this compound is. In this case, it's ammonia, so I would have um, 17.04. Okay, so you'd add up the nitrogen and the three hydrogens to get you the 17.04. Okay, now I can't finish here. My grams of ammonia cancel, but my moles 
are not what I want the answer to be. I want it to be in molecules. Now, if you remember, we said that if I have moles of ammonia, I can convert that to molecules. Because just like over here, we have one mole, we know what the mass is. If I have one mole, I know how many molecules I have, which would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So then my moles cancel, and it leaves me with molecules. So this would be the setup. So I take 96.4, and I divide it by 17, and then I multiply it by Avogadro's number. What I end up with is 3.4. 1 times 10 to the 24. And this would be molecules of NH3. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, what this is saying is that if I measure out this mass of, of ammonia, I can figure out exactly how many molecules I have. So I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm actually measuring masses and then I'm capable of figuring out exactly how many particles that I have. Okay, we're never going to be able to count that number, but we can actually use this measurement to fit make the connection. So by making measurements of masses, we're going to be able to count particles. Okay, all right, so we'll take a look at this more in class, and uh, I'll answer any questions you have. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot.